Welcome everyone to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth, and as you can see, this is another uh, throwback graphic novel uh, episode. Uh, today I'm going to be uh, giving you a, a, a quick look through uh, Conan the Barbarian, the Witch Queen of Ashram. Uh, so, uh, as you can see by the graphic, uh, this was uh, this was written by Don Carr, Gary Quapitz, and Art Nichols. Um, I haven't I actually. We'll see. The story is by Don Carr. The pencils, all right. So the pencils and the inks. Uh, so Don Carr is the writer, and then the principal artists are Gary Quapitz and uh, Art Nichols. So uh, going to crack this open and uh, give you a good uh, look at the graphic novel. So here we have it. And uh, as you can see, it's a uh, you know, ni nice cover art on it, a uh, graphic novel put out by Marvel. And it was dated 1985. So, uh, you know, it is quite old, uh, a little bit rough around the edges, you know, some, some dents and dings and, and everything. Uh, you know, as a collector, you know, um, well, pre what I would call a collector, you know, as an average comic book reader uh, of Conan back during the, you know, the 1980s and such, you know, I was still pretty much a teenager, uh, you know, in my mid to late eight teens, when I started uh, collecting and reading, uh, you know, Conan the Barbarian. And so, uh, you know, I didn't keep the, either the best of care of these things or plus the, the book is about 40 years old and it's been through, uh, it's been through quite a few moves. So, um, but anyway, I'll give you a good look at the, you know, the comic itself. So, I mean, the art you can see is, I would put this art somewhere in between the style that you saw in the, in the regular Conan comic uh, book uh, back in the day and Savage Sword of Conan. So it's, it's grittier than the comic, but more colorful and more, more comic book style than um than savage sword of conan was and so we go through and you know so you can see that certainly here in the way that conan his uh you know his drawn and and colored in just a slightly more cartoonish look to him um as far as the you know as far as the story goes i mean in many, many of the, the Conan comics back in the day, and this is more towards what you would see in Savage Sword than you would see in the regular Conan comic. I mean, Conan tends to start out in a brothel. <laughs> I mean, many of many of his stories started out in that place, and, you know, um, the story has, you know, been repeated multiple, multiple times where Conan is in the room often drunk with several, uh, you know, several of the women uh, there and then the guards uh, start chopping through the door because they are, you know, they're looking to capture him for whatever thieving uh, he had done. So very almost cliche Conan um, story line uh, to begin with. So here the guards are confronting him. He's still drinking. And, you know, then the violence ensues. And he basically, in very, you know, true to form, barbaric fashion, beats the crap out of everybody that's trying to capture him. And he, of course, escapes the first time. His damsels are, you know, kind of lamenting at his uh, departure and so on he goes through and, and pretty much you know causes chaos during the entire chase i mean here he is grabbing a you know what looks like a a sausage and starts beating the crap out of the um out of the guards that are chasing him and goes on and on until he is eventually clubbed over the head 
and finally subdued, taken prisoner, and then the next aspect of the storyline goes. So here he is, uh, you know, he is captured and you find the person who was actually looking for him. Now this person, and, and I hadn't pre, you know, reread this, uh, this, I believe, um, I'm the Prince, uh, Tarascus heir to the throne of, uh, Nemedia. So I know when I was glancing through this originally, Tarascus came to mind. Uh, Tarascus eventually becomes the king of, uh, Nemedia and in, um, you know, he eventually uh, invades, you know, as the king of Nemedia, he invades Aquilonia when Conan is king at that point. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's in, uh, in the Hour of the Dragon that uh, that takes place. And so he becomes a, a major nemesis of uh, Conan as, as King Conan. And then King Conan, of course ends up, uh, I think he either ends up killing him or um, one of the demons that uh, that uh, Tarascus, uh became involved with, uh, he, he ends up getting killed by that demon. Uh, I think it's along the lines of either the, the Thothamon storyline or... Um, or there was a, another Tythonian wizard that uh, that ends up looking to do the same thing, um, you know, in in taking Conan out, and had controlled um, the Ring of Set and and such. And you know, um, the stories have been done so many times that even I am conflating uh, the stories in my head uh, between them. But uh, you know, so here you have, you know, Conan is captured. They're trying to coerce him, you know, in some uh, enhanced interrogation here uh, to get him to agree to help, uh, which he does. And you can see that, you know, the the length of this graphic novel is, you know, obviously much longer than a, you know, typical comic book. And... Um, I mean, the storytelling and, and the amount of, uh, of action and violence that they're able to do in the graphic novels and in Savage Sword of Conan were, you know, much higher than uh, what they were able to do in the regular Conan the comic, uh, the Conan the Barbarian comic book. So these were always intended for a slightly older, slightly more mature audience. And so some of the themes you can see are, you know, a little bit more, you know, PG-13 um, as opposed to the typical PG that you would see. Now, again, uh, you know, this is a 1985 book and the story... Um, the story probably wouldn't be printable today uh, as, as as they have started it out. I kind of, I, I rec recall when I was flipping through this one particular scene that they do, uh, which really caught my interest. So when you see people in the foreground here, they're just like this reddish kind of outline. And, you know, same thing here. And when they're looking at each other, I, I just kind of like the way that they show distance, you know, in that they, they just use the figures in red, or in this case, in like a, a bluish gray, um, in this case here. So, and that's, that's how this artist tries to show uh, depth, is that you don't lose as much detail in the characters um but what you do lose is the the coloration so when they're they're down here looking forward they're kind of subdued here because they want you you know the artist wants you to focus out over here you know and so 
it's kind of interesting the way that he uses that color difference to draw your eye to, you know, away from this and to look out over here. Same thing here. Kind of draws your eye away from them once you've seen them. And what are they pointing at? They're pointing at this space over here. So that's that's one thing that I found was, was quite interesting in this uh, particular graphic novel was the use of... Uh, the use of color, you know, uh, in order to portray uh, either distance or to draw your eye from one part of the one part of the cell to another. So once again, Conan is, you know, he's armed. He gets his treasure, and he is fighting his way out of uh, the uh, the predicament that he ends up in. And very, very common um, theme here. So I'm assuming this woman becomes the the witch of Asheron. It, it appears that she is, um, you know, she is taken over by this, uh, you know, this particular fiend or creature or whatever. The spark of life within this dead flesh will kindle to flames within you. Yeah, so she's possessed, and so she becomes the the witch of Asheron. And here you have her, you know, fully taking taking over. And then Conan goes into into pursuit mode in order to gain back what he, you know, had lost. You can see uh, she's here grabbing hearts out of people, you know, tearing them out. And she's about to grab hold of uh, Tarascus here. And then this is Conan's sword, if you remember from previously. And clearly he cuts off her hand and then drives her right through the abdomen with the sword. She is left for dead and then out spawning from her body comes the true form of the, you know, creature that had, uh, you know, taken over her body. And I fully expect that Conan will cut this thing to pieces, which he does, drives a sword point through its head, and there are more, in which case they flee. You know, that's that's the one thing about Conan is that, uh, you know, he's he's never he's never portrayed as as you know fighting to the death. He will he will flee from what appears to him to be an impossible task. And of course, with the death, uh, this is another, tr you know, Conan trope. You, you kill the main, you know, the main wizard and everything, all of the structures that the wizard was utilizing tends to fall to pieces once, you know, his or her magic dies along with him. And at the end, you have Conan meeting up with uh, Tarascus and, you know, the other lady. And you can see here, um, he grabs a hold of her and apparently rides off with the, rides off with the girl. All right, so uh, again, another very common, uh, you know, Conan trope. And at the end here, you have some, some pencils by uh, Gary Quapitz, you know, and, and this is more of the style of, uh, Savage Sword, you know, black and white and, you know, sometimes just pencils, you know, um, and here is the final. So if you can always, you know, if you can ever get your hands on these older, you know, graphic novels, uh, I, I mean, they, 
they're interesting. They're, you know, the stories, if, if you're not familiar with Conan stories and, and the old Conan comics, then they'll all seem very fresh to you. Um, the artwork, you know, during the 80s, you know, in Savage Sword and in, the, you know, the regular Conan comic books were, were always, you know, some of the biggest names and some of the best, you know, artists out there. And so you'll, you'll never or you'll rarely come across a graphic novel where the, um, where the artwork is, is kind of subpar and, and you know, you, you, you'd be like, ah, oh, geez, this is not really worth looking at. So, uh, so anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's a, you know, very quick little look at, uh, you know, at this graphic novel and I continue, uh, I will continue to do these videos. Uh, with these graphic novels, just to give you, you know, a quick look. I'm, I'm kind of pulling them off my shelf randomly. Um, I have about 14 or 15 of them. Um, not all of them are Conan, but I, I will go through the Conans first. And uh, although maybe I'll surprise you with the next one. And, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed taking a look at this. Uh, and if you do get a chance to get a hold of uh, any of the new Conan comics uh, that, you know, Marvel has just reacquired the, uh, the license for Conan the Barbarian. And I'll be following this video up with uh, a video of uh, the Conan the Barbarian number two. And I'll do a quick run through of that comic as well. So once again, uh, you know, thanks for joining in. I hope you uh, like this video and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen sometime very soon. Have a good rest of the week.